What's up everyone, this is Shark Talking, welcome back to my channel. Today video we'll be talking about Argo Malcolm class. This class here will have three different phases, and that is the reason why it just does not stay for too long. It is only for seven days, then we have a second phase, and then the third one. So we need cooperation, we need to finish this together. Uh, let me tell you something from the start. Forget the idea of trainees, for now at least, because the enemies here are pretty tough. They have tons of HP, and even people that have maxed characters will have difficulty going fast. So, first of all, uh, we just have to go for the stages that are available when they are available so that we can finish the progress as soon as possible and check the raid boss later it may be better for farming right now the status caps here is the same as story mode 1670s uh raid boss will be 1680s and when we reach the final boss it will be 1690s so well for now it doesn't change too much upon story now a very good thing about this event is the shop we have 5,000 jewels to get from here. The currency that you're gonna use is this one here that you get when a node is still not complete. If you don't uh, farm it right now, you will be able to later once the raid is complete. But you still have other equipments like the Phoenix Cape and the Wave Dress that will be very good for future boss fights. Alongside Platinum Tickets, books, and some stuff like Flashstone Metals to upgrade another weapons. Science this is pretty standard, then we'll get more items added later. So let's go here on this stage. This stage here is a normal stage right now. This is the one that I am farming. Uh, I'll be using the strategy that I have that it's kind of very, very stable. Uh, so I'm using Amazon Raid X Formation. There is Saruin, Christmas Urpina, and Matrak. They are very good characters for farming. Saruin can just use his attack twice in a row while Christmas Rupina will be using her her strong nuke attack and then some flash. There is also Matriarch, I just got her to Shining Glory in Gleaming Way. Leon is on the back because he's just gonna buff the people for the second turn. Here in this event, it's just better to bring characters that do good damage on both turns, not only on turn one. We have two waves to fight the enemies, so let's go. Okay, since we will never know the weaknesses of the enemies, they are just too random, you have to bring characters that have dual element attacks. So they have higher chances of hitting the weaknesses, even if they don't, they will at least do neutral damage. In this position here, we got two characters to attack and they kill the enemies. That's unlikely to happen. Usually you need to attack with at least three. Uh, Leon helps a lot in this composition because he buffs 10% for everyone and also 5% extra for Smash, 5% extra for Sun. So some people here get a lot of damage boost. Strange that <laughs> this trainee is attacking before the other characters, but as you see, this is my most stable farming strategy for this event in general stages. Now, the second strategy I have brings four characters in the Rainbow Rangers formation, starting with Urpina, she's a fast attacker, will really help with Bertrand, and there's also Zeno, two fast attackers that need to go before Bertrand. So, uh, I hire it Noble Cross, so that he becomes perfect for AoE cycle. Bertrand is good because he can just get BP back to use Abaddon Hands twice in a row. His power is just pretty high. And what you need to do is bring equipment to decrease his agility, like Halberg of Death, like Ox Geta, and also this one here, Serene Stone, that also decreases negative 10 agility as well with the Accessory Stone. Well, with that, he will likely attack later. There is also Leo here, and Leo is gonna help by having delay, and then on turn 2 he uses Imperial Glory to help out killing all enemies. I'm not entirely sure, but I did solve many enemies here with two sun, so Orpina and Zeno will do good damage. Yeah, two enemies are. On the Shining Sword, we'll probably kill two of them. And now Abaddon Hands finishes at least the one that's remaining. So on the second way, what we have is another Abel Hands. He's the only fast attacker after Leon now. His fast attack is also double element, so it really helps clearing the waves. See? The next strategy brings Amazon Raid X again. We have young Gustav on the front line. He's gonna use his wheel swing plus, it's poor slash damage but it's pretty strong. We also have Saruin because of double destructive blow. 
just increase the mines to 16. Then there is also for new use, it's better to inherit Spinning Trample, but you can also use Hydro Cyclone, we'll leave Tarrant Wave on 16. And in the back you need one AoE Spellcaster to help out with damage. In this case I'm bringing Yundin with Ice Javelin is inherited, but you can also just bring Squall. But you need to amplify so that she can use an AoE attack on the second wave. There is room for one trainee in this occasion. Well, five different enemies. Uh, Gustav has a very powerful attack, but it's only Slash. Do not hit for weaknesses all the time. It's strange that Yundin attacked before the other characters. She's pretty fast, but... Well, Destructive Blow is being used, and the last one will be Spinning Trample. We are all dead. Now we have four different enemies, and Gustav now has only Iron Wave. So your mage will just help out a little here. It's hard to beat this without the help of a fourth character. But they are all dead now. The next strategy brings any my stream, and I have two mages that have fast attack in the front line. That being Joe with her Sorbet Flambe, and then she has El Nino Inheritance. Then I have Barthelemy. This is the old Barthelemy, but the best one is the new one. It's just that I don't have that one yet. And in the middle we have Bertrand, and Bertrand is with equipment that decreases his agility so that he goes after them. And you can also bring another AoE Mage Attacker, but I'm bringing Rock Bouquet and I have Blooming Fireworks on 12 and Dark Pulse Inherited. So five enemies, let's see if they are weak to our attacks. Sorbet Flambe goes first, then Abaddon Hands by Barthelemy. Now it's Abaddon Hands for... Yeah, nice. Bertrand just helps by using Abaddon Hands again on the next wave. Pretty nice damage. Dark Pools, El Nino. We're gonna finish the enemies with Heat Wind, I believe. If not, your trainee will have to do a little damage here. Indeed. The next strategy brings Deadly Pierce X with AoE setup. I have here T260G, I'm gonna use Starlight Shower, so inherit Mud Spread, leave the other attacks out of the setup. And I have also Commando Emilia, she's gonna use Ricochet Parade and Total Shot, but you can also bring Rofus with Submachine Gun, since he will also buff Daxerty. Uh, there is also a Matriarch here, we have Shining Glory and Inherited Gleaming Way, it will help on the second wave. Rias, we have Xeno on the front line with Noble Cross and Light Needles as the second attack. In the back I have one trainee that's actually strong, Madeline, if someone does not die. Now well, let's see who will go first after Xenon. Got start oh man, we got a five people combo. Starlight Shout, there is a lot of damage here. But they were not dead yet. The good thing about using Emid is that when something like this happens, she will always use AoE, while Rofus will try to use Gun and Blade if he skips one turn. Another one that can work just the same is IRPO Fuse, but you need to inherit Submachine Gun. So if he goes for first turn, Submachine Gun. If he goes for the second, he uses Air Support. Xeno will likely finish this. Or you are training in the back, they are almost dead. In this case, yeah. It was a little overkill. Okay, so we discussed it. AoE farming. There are stages where you have only one enemy. Stages with the medium node. This stage here, Divination 7 and other ones, will be harder to deal with because the enemies have just so much HP that I don't even know how much. And there are some formations that will work well, but you can also try instant queue. First of all, we try pure damage. We try to increase the damage of all our characters to make up for it. What we have here, the first one being Amazon Raid X. I'm bringing the first one being Rook on the front line because I want a hammer row to be used. Hope Beat still does good damage on turn 2. Uh, we also have Urpina because she can just do 
Cross break twice in a row by Inheritance and Platinum meddling with Luna for Green Inherit. Just give them burst 11, so if she skips one turn, she still has a good attack. In the back, I'm bringing Gustav because of his triple crush and also buffing everyone STR. You don't need Bertrand here, but if you just want to finish it off, just get Twilight Fall to 11, Dry Slot to 13, and he's still gonna do very good damage on turn 2. Okay, this enemy here is weak to Pierce, if I remember correctly. We have a combination of some stuff, but you will never know if the enemy is weak to Rook, for example. Rook will do a lot of damage, even if they are not weak to. So let's see, Cross Break, Sword Breath, Luna Fulgur. It's probably dead before Gustav attacks. Yes, it was. So in farming the stages here, if you are not going with instant kill, just try to bring strategies like this one, to kill it as soon as possible so everyone can get the rewards for this event. Nocturnal Chase is pretty strong. His enemy was not weak too, and even because of that, we are needing to attack with other characters. Lunar Fulgur, Lock. They also have very high endurance. Time for Triple Crush, Triple Crush barely did damage. Now I'm going to talk about an instant kill setup, that will be about Bertrand. Well, Bertrand has an attack that can instant kill, Twilight Falk can instant kill, he also self buffs for intelligence, so he has a very high chance, I already give him the best equipments I could, I increase the dry slot to 16, and if you are using any mystery information, you have to bring Beauty or other character that has delay, like Rising Floor Storm, it helps, because it would just make Bertrand go first. The other cards in the background won't have so much agility, so it will be easier for them to no-go before him. Polka is inheriting Scatter Explosions, because if an enemy is not instant killable, it's usually weak to heat. That's why we have the other one being blue, and blue also has a heat nuke with Waking Dragon. I brought Leon here in the back because, well, he has delay attack, he won't interfere, and I increased the Imperial Guard to 16 even. Well, the Petrified Fish is instant killable. If you just kill, he always goes first, with this setup at least. Now the blue dragon, I don't know if it's instant killable. It is. So this enemy here is not instant killable and it's also not weak to heat. Like many of the occasions, you have some trouble trying to kill it. So scatter explosion will be resisted, <laughs> at least waking dragon will not. Now, we'll probably have to see Leon and Beauty attacking. But I hope it just dies now. It did. Won't always. Let's see if the second wave has an enemy that is instant killable. In this case, uh, it is instant killable, but because we could not get BP back, you have to wait one extra turn so that Bertrand will have enough BP. It's not much of a problem, but you just got slowed down by one turn. So usually you get three turns when the enemies are not instant killable, or even worse, four turns, but it doesn't happen so much often. Now it's time for Bertrand to kill this enemy. Now, the last setup brings Rainbow Rangers in another very popular instant killer attacker, that being Dark. I'm placing him on the agility position because I do have Bartholomew Apple maxed here. He has a lot of intelligence. Not just that, uh, you have to increase Kaleidoscope to 16 and just focus on Stinger. I have two characters that will debuff Will, that being Kirtland Mayor, he's on the dex position, and the newest Orluge that will debuff Will as well. And if he doesn't, he will just do damage. I also have two characters that will help if an enemy is not instant killable, that being Rook, it's gonna do a lot of damage. And here on the top, I have the latest Polka with Scatter Explosions inherited. It can also be the Bartholomew or even Lunar New Year Blue. Any of them will work. Okay, so here, this enemy is instant killable, so it will be easy. Dark me on the agility position means that he will go first like 95% of the time. This other enemy is also instant killable. But if some of them are not, the other characters will help out. 
But guys, the video ends here. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it helps you in any way. If you want to support the channel, there are links in the description of the video. And don't forget to join our Discord server, where we talk about Saga and other JRPGs. I hope to see you soon in the next video. Bye.